Iran now is going to be held responsible. The Iran Bank, Millet, is going to be held responsible for the deaths of people that they find, where they financed terrorism and people died and now the families are saying we want to be paid back that money because we have damages. We lost our father, we lost our husband, uh, we lost our, our, our children. Right. So they have now the right to go after Iran because we have frozen assets. And with those frozen assets, we have the right to, to ask for that money to be paid back. What is your take on this case as far as it looks like it's getting way down the road. It looks like Iran may have a problem. It looks like Saudi Arabia may have a problem because now the Supreme Court and the, even the lower courts are saying, you know what, you caused this problem, uh, bank, you financed it, you washed the money. Now this is now that now you're going to have to pay some people back. What's your take and on this? It's always kind of uh, uh, good facts make good law. At the end of the day, that. Uh, the, the plaintiffs are able to show, and keep in mind, these are, these are wounded vets that are bringing these cases. And the wounded vets that are bringing a lot of these cases are able to demonstrate that the banks have washed or laundered the money and funneled that money back to these terrorist organizations. People don't understand this, do they? No, they don't they really understand. Don't. They you think that the money, they, they, they simply think that ISIS or, 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 or any type of terrorism group somehow just magically comes up with the money. It doesn't work like that. What we found out with 9-11 was the Saudi family actually financed it. The banks then washed the money, right. and then that money ended up in the hands of the terrorists that killed 3,000 Americans it's on the U.S. It's the gasoline that keeps them going. It's the fuel. The money's the fuel. And American Congress has said, banks, you're not going to be able to continue funding, funding these organizations and, and washing this money. And they told them to knock it off, but they're still doing it because the amount of profit they make is obscene. Okay, but this is very specific. This case, from a legal standpoint, is kind of a, it's not a precedent, but it's showing when the U.S. Supreme Court declines to take on a case right. where the underlying issue is, is it proper for a claimant to be able to sue a bank in Iran right. for washing money? Here the in Supre the U.S. Supreme Court says, you know what? We're going to take a pass on this. We're not going to get involved. To me, that's a trend. It's a positive trend. And as I really look at this thing... And by uh, take a pass, you mean that they're going to let them go ahead and sue here in the they're U.S.? They're going to let them sue. They're yeah. going to actually this let them go deal. after frozen assets. In other words, some of this money has actually been frozen by the U.S. government. And the question has always been, how much of that money can these people go after? Right now, uh, the court is... You know, you've got people arguing that the, the, uh, the Iran bank, Malay Bank, $17.6 million right. is what some of these people are claiming as far as their damages. And they're saying the U.S. Supreme Court not taking uh, control of this says, yeah, you, you, can, you can do that.